International, and younger, is better for her. Do do? Yeah, I think he's on. Yeah. Hey, Anton, how's it going? Uh, yep, yeah, thanks. Thanks. Uh, I'm good. Yeah, sorry, I, my my problem was up. So, um, this is Morgan. Hello. Uh, Hello there. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, Okay. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Kind of <laughs> yes, it's kind of working. <laughs> so um, I will uh, I will uh, um, just put it like this, and you will see Morgan and the slides. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, hopefully you hopefully you are yeah, good enough. The slides are more important. Than I am. Yeah. <laughs> no, because they are running them out of the justice league. So I was thinking if you were sending to him the slides, maybe you can. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, just want to send you the, the slides. We are just trying to get sight uh, for Anton and then we start. Okay. So do you think Shlomo will turn up around 11.45 or what? Maybe? No? Ah, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Which direction are you supposed to go? I think that direction. I think that's for me. What's that? I think that's for me. Oh, Oh, yeah, it's so good. I don't know if The question, the very first question is why did I use that one and where would you not use one is two? Because you have no time. I have no time, exactly. I don't get points for being on the ball. Yes, checked. I'm not a Neither am I, Um. Uh, could, could you maybe yeah. send them uh, to oh, send them. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so good. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a vocal on that. Yeah. So it makes more sense. Yeah. 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 Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's signed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Anton, you should have the um, the slides. Bevan sent you the slides, so you should get them by email. Yeah. Uh, I remove I remove the audio uh, from my laptop, so you know if I get emails and so on, that's not an issue. Uh, if you want to make a question, uh, send them by email to to oh, Bevan okay. uh, on the chat. Make them on the chat to Bevan. Yeah, you, you open a Hangout chat with Bevan, and you yeah. make him the question, and then we can activate the audio, OK? Um, you have sent it. OK, guys, uh, I suggest we start. 10.30, um, exactly. Is it 10.30? No, it's 10.30. No, it's 10.30. No, it's 10.30. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little five ten years. I was going to say, he's Italian, so we're from Russia, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, that's where you are. Yeah, too well. Yeah. Um, so, this is Morgan, um, and he's from the University of North Cambria, yeah. that is in Newcastle, um, in the UK. The um, Newcastle. Yeah, the Newcastle, now lives in Newcastle. Um, and uh, um, before joining North Cambria, he has been a bit around Europe. Uh, you have been in Lugano with public understanding. I have a slide for this. Ah, oh, okay. So yeah, yeah. I shut up and uh, let uh, let Morgan go then. Um, I, I say to Morgan that we can interrupt at any time as usual in our meetings. 
right? And, and so we have plenty of time, so feel, feel free to leave our help you know, so, and so on. And hopefully. I'm used to that question. Fantastic. Okay, guys. Um, so thanks, Guido. I just want to say thank you to Guido for inviting me uh, all this way. Yeah, uh, only for this talk. Only for this talk. I'm leaving this time. So it's good to be here. And uh, it's such a beautiful day as well, finally. Um, so as uh, Guido said, this is actually some um, work that I've done with a couple of colleagues. So you may or may not recognize the names, depending on your field. Um, Claudia Huff, who's at uh, TU Delft in the Netherlands. Um, and David Elswad is a long, long time collaborator with me who uh, is actually in Reading for German. Um, this strange, wobbly continent is uh, Europe. Um, I just thought we'd give you a little bit of background uh, on, I'll just do a bit egotistical here, but a little bit of background on me and where I've been and what I've done. Um, so actually, um, we both started our academic careers pretty much the same place, same city at least. Um, so Guido was at University of Glasgow, which is a bit more prestigious. Uh, I was at the slightly less prestigious University of Sun Slide, but nevertheless. Um, um, so I did my PhD there with uh, Ian Ruffin. You were the city boy. That's true. Yeah, you were out in the suburbs. Yeah. Somewhere. That's true. Um, as Guido alluded to, um, I then actually moved to uh, Germany, essentially because we offered me a job. But no, um, actually. Uh, this colleague that I mentioned, David Elswell, I was working there at the time. Uh, we started to collaborate, so I went there and did a postdoc there for a year and a half. Uh, very interesting. Uh, and then, uh, more recently, I moved for two years to Lugano uh, in Switzerland uh, to work with Fabio Pistani. Again, it's sort of, I mean, I are people we have here, but certainly a few people will, will recognize Fabio's name. Uh, I did a couple of years of postdoc in uh, Lugano. And then um, making sort of a nice triangle and slowly heading my way back home. Uh, and now I'm working in Newcastle uh, in the northeast of England. Um, so it's a bit of a, a, bit of a potted history. And, and it's quite funny because you, you gain quite a bit of experience with users, uh, studying users, because that's yeah. um, your PhD and then also with David. So actually, the PhD was not at all on users. I tried I to, I tried to avoid users. Uh, as I could. Uh, I did the Bayesian statistical models. So yeah. I just had data, there were no users. You were doing to topping models. Right? Topping yeah, models, right? Yeah, that was when they were cool. Yeah, yeah. Now nobody cares about topping models, so I stopped doing them. Uh, but then they were cool back in the day. Uh, I actually, yeah, then I moved to Germany, and then David, David's really into dealing with users and doing user studies and things like that. So over time, he coerced me into accepting that maybe users are useful to look at as well. And now I'm fully accepting of that change. Yeah, but, but then you, you went back to the dark side. And then I went back Fabio, to the dark right? side Fabio. Yeah. And then I flipped back and forward depending on my point of the time, which is quite a nice thing to be able to do. Um, so, yes. I, so I, I like to say that I've kind of got a bit of background in the, the sort of harder, more technical uh, systems based uh, aspects and also a bit of experience in the more uh, software, sort of user based aspects. And I always like to sell this idea that somewhere in the middle, it's probably a good point. If you can learn a bit more about the system, a bit more about the user, then maybe you can do something that's overall better. Uh, and that's kind of what I generally aim to do. Uh, or at least that sounds really nice. Uh, it worked quite well on my job interviews, okay. Uh, so, um, for those of you who are not from an IR background, uh, I'm going to summarize very, very quickly where we are in IR. And I expect objections from the room. So let's see, especially from this table. Um, but what I'm going to say is that. Basically, if you look at the history of IR, and this is a totally different, this is not any performance measure of the left, but just choose your favorite performance measure. Essentially, we're getting this kind of, you plot it over time, we're getting this kind of thing. It's becoming asymptotic, right? Early on, performance was quite poor uh, in terms of average precision, whatever. Um, and we started improving performance with things like vector space models. We moved away from Boolean models with vector space, then we had these modern probabilistic models, and we played a lot around, around with topic models and things like that. And performance has improved over time, but it's starting to sort of tail off a little bit. I'm expecting, no, nothing? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What were the measures back in the 60s? Sorry? What kind of measures and queries were you thinking of? Oh, so I'm just thinking that, I'm just saying, let's choose a measure like average precision. Yeah. And yeah. overall, yeah. the kind of uh, algorithms that we had mm -hmm. very early on were, were giving relatively poor performance. And as we've moved on in time, we'd hope this would happen. Science would not be very impressive. 
otherwise. But as time has moved on, we've improved performance. But the gains that we're now realizing uh, in relation to previous work, it's starting to become asymptotic. That's my statement that I'm going to make. Uh, and actually, the big problem is, so, you know, if you go to SIGIR, if you go to SIGIR this year, you will find several papers that will have a new algorithm that's a subtle improvement on last year's model. And yes, it will probably have a statistically significant improvement over the previous model, but it will only be over a huge number of queries. Um, and the question is, can users actually perceive this improvement? And I would argue probably not. Right? Um, and uh, what we were thinking is actually a complementary approach to this is actually to get the system more to work. So we've done a lot of work in IR in trying to improve the system. And we thought, why not improve the user? Right? If we don't really try to do that very much. So this is the kind of background of what we're thinking. We were thinking about this was actually a SIG IR in Dublin that we had this we had some coffee and we started chatting a little bit. I think we're, I think the SIG IR paper rejected from the system section, so we're it was sour grapes and we thought, like, that's a bit of it. I mean we'll be users. Um, and so yeah, my <coughs> argument here is with, with all this focus on algorithms, the user's been kind of forgotten for the most part IR. Still no objections. Yeah, no, I, th I, th I, th I think we are, we agree on this point. Oh, we came to almost the same conclusion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There is, there is a, a, you know, when you say the performance of reach an asymptotic level, uh, you know, maybe one could could add that that is uh, that is certainly true for certain type of tasks. If we think about web, you know, common it's, web tasks. It might be not the case for very specific uh, end tail tasks. That's a fair right? point. Um, but I should probably contextualize this by saying we're looking at general sort of ad hoc yeah. web such tasks. Um, now, I feel like there's kind of a complementary approach to some extent, you could argue, because there has obviously been work trying to help users to formulate better queries. So we're thinking of things like query suggestions or related structures, also completion, and so on and so forth. But there are issues with these kinds of systems as well. Um, most notably, you kind of get this narrowing effect, right? And kind of get a bubble effect. Because people see, they start typing a query, and they see that, oh, OK, we've got high ranked suggestions here. I'll just use that high ranked suggestion. And by dint of that being clicked, Google goes, oh, OK, that's a positive vote for that query. Uh, and then it gets ranked higher. So basically, you get this rich, you get richer problem starts happening. People get a little bit restricted in what they search for. Um, and actually, the research would suggest that users mostly ignore these anyway. So what happens very often, user has a complicated search query uh, or search problem. They submit a query. If that query doesn't miraculously return the results they're looking for in the top 10 results, they mostly give up. And this is not what we want, ideally. Um, and the other, also, research would suggest that users are pretty bad at using search systems. And I should point out, in 95% of cases, this is not a problem, because their search request is and ambiguous, and we can deal with it very, very well. People will return the top result. In 90% of cases, it's you know, students searching for a Wikipedia article to steal, uh, borrow some uh, text from for report, things like that. And that's pretty straightforward. Right? The issue is when you have a more complicated search problem, and users very, very, very rarely formulate queries. The queries they do submit are very short, very unspecific, very often. Um, and we would also argue fairly conditioned by common search UI. Everyone, most people use Google. Um, when I gave this talk before, I said most people, one search engine you tend to use, but it's fairly fair to say that most people that use Google. Um, and they don't tend to adapt their strategies. They submit a query, if it doesn't give them what they want, they kind of give up. They don't try anything else. Um, but we know from literature as well that experts can achieve much better results. Right? So there are ways, it's not just that you, know, you can't do any better than users are currently doing, you can do a lot better, you just have to know how to do it. Um, and the thing is that they do use different strategies. Yes. So, so uh, is uh, which type of expertise are you, are you looking at here? Are you looking at the main expertise, or no, just the okay. um, search strategies? Just search expertise. Yeah. And actually, I'll go into this in a bit more detail later on. But yeah, it's a fair point. Uh, obviously, if you have specific domain knowledge, then you can be an average user. But that's kind of unfair. Mm. Yeah. That's, that's a good point. Um, the other thing, does anyone know this logo? This is DuckDuckGo. This was very, very big. So the idea of DuckDuckGo was basically they said, we're going to build a search engine, but we're not going to have any privacy. So basically, we're not going to record anything. We're not going to store any search logs. 
We're not going to do any customization. None of this because people are worried about privacy. So when Dumb Dumb Girl came along, I think 2012, 2013, there was quite a lot of excitement. You got a lot of tweets like this. People were like, oh, yes, I'm going to switch from Google to Dumb Dumb Girl and see how I get on. Right? There's loads of tweets like this. And actually, when they first launched, they did, if you look at their usage data, they did really, really well. But then about a week later, you got a lot more tweets like this. Right? I really want to switch from Google to Dumb Dumb Girl, to go, but I can't find it. Right? And this is basically the problem. So it was more like Dumb Dumb Girl. Um, and this is because, I would argue, a lot of people think they care about privacy until their searches don't end. Right? Likewise, they also think they can do the search engine well until they discover the right? And the problem is that, yeah, they were just basically not adapting the strategies. They were just submitting the same queries they submitted to Google. When they weren't getting the same growing results, they gave up. Right? It's not that you can't get good results from DuckDuckGo. It's a very sophisticated algorithm. It's very well thought through. It's just not personalized like Google. It's not contextualized in the same way. You know, if I submit a query here, it knows I'm in Australia, so it will contextualize it to that. Duck, 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 doesn't, because that would obviously require them to find out some privacy, private information. Right. So our big question was, can we teach searchers to use an arbitrary search engine as well as possible? Right. And in thinking about this, we thought, yeah, well, this is kind of okay. cool. Yes. So do we know what Google's doing? No. So no one really knows. But we can assume they're doing quite a lot. What are the things you think they're doing? What's the receive view or what they might be doing? They're certainly going to be doing some running to rank, right? Yeah. For a start. And they're certainly going to be doing some, a lot of contextualization. They, they certainly use, for example, your location. There's a lot of efforts to use it time of day. They certainly use your previous search history. There's no doubt about that. They also use things like, I mean, if you use a Google account, you know, I use Gmail as well. If they, they, they'll scour your Gmail for any information that's useful to them as well. You know, at the moment, if I search for Melbourne, I can't or somewhere, Brisbane, uh, they're pushing up results that I've already looked at. They're pushing up results. I, I, I booked, we're going to Tangle uh, Resort in a couple of days. And if I search for Brisbane or Island or anything, they're going to push that result for the local search rank. So they're doing a lot of things that, uh, if you're worried about privacy, it's something an issue. Because I guess the, uh, when you look at history and literature in this area, like there has been those ideas that have been around a while to use all those different types of things. The question is how to do it without generating a lot of rubbish. Yep. Yeah, like, and, and like, I guess, do you think that they have, Google has solved that problem? I wouldn't say that they necessarily solved They have an incredible amount of data. So I should put it, my thesis was on personalization models, but he's talking more about personalization. And so I know it's a difficult problem. Yeah. I spent four or five years buying my head on the table, so I know it's a difficult problem. Yeah. Uh, and I think the thing that Google has that uh, in an academic environment doesn't necessarily have is they have an incredible amount of human generated data. Right? So very often, in 95% of the cases, or possibly even more, uh, if I submit a search query, a lot of other people have also submitted that search query, and you can see what they then clicked on. So they use a lot of work to rank. And if you've got, you know, terabytes or yottabytes or whatever data, and you can make use of that, you can exploit it. And I think we can do very, very well in many cases. But the argument here is when you don't have these yottabytes of data to deal with, you have a normal search engine that doesn't have all this line to rank for it. So does it get as simple as just saying that their maximum likelihood estimates was better than everyone else's? Is that, is that, is, is that, is that the key? Um, I think tragically, I think it's a big chunk of it. Yeah, I think that's the problem. Yeah, I really do. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you see that. I mean, you, you, it's very hard. You, know, you go to SIG IR and there's lots of very, very intelligent academics doing some really nice work on really sophisticated, elaborate algorithms. And they're probably not going to beat Google. Yeah. Purely because Google has a lot more data. And that's, it's unfortunate, but uh, I, think, yeah, I think that is the case. It's a, yeah. it's a bit sad. But, uh, you know, uh, that's, all, that's what we've been dealt with. Um, and I think, but I think there's a big move that people getting fed up with Google because they have all this data and they can use of it. I think you know, people are going to want to use search engines like that. Uh, and the other issue comes in when you're forced to use a search engine that you're not familiar with. So I guess, uh, you know, I know when I use the uh, internet at my work, they don't use Google. They have some in-house thing. Okay. It's absolutely terrible and I can't find anything. Unless I really, really think about it and try to apply some search strategies. And then sometimes I can find things. Not always. 
But if it were Google, it would just nine times out of ten at least you know, find it for me. So I think. So uh, j just a couple of comments. The first is uh, um, I remember Ricardo uh, speaking about how they do personalization in their group. And I wonder if it's, uh, if you know, um, you could scale what Ricardo says to Google or whether it only applies to Yahoo because they have so way less traffic than Google. But he was saying they don't personalize to the actual user, they personalize to the category of user. So they try to, to put users into, into buckets, into clusters, whatever you want to call them, and then understand what's the best personalization and learning from uh, a personalization they do to a user in this category and seeing whether it has been successful or not and then <coughs> adapt it for other users in the category. That's, that's very common in recommended systems, mm. especially with cold, cold start problems. Yeah. 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 And so th that's the first. The second is uh, actually a question from Anton. So uh, Anton is asking, uh, the, the internet, uh, he's asking, uh, shouldn't we be teaching people to query from the state of the art, uh, not from older search technology? And uh, you know, I guess he took your previous slide where you say, what about teaching uh, uh, to users, right? It's, and, a, it's a fair point. Mm, yeah. And uh, do you, uh, so my, you might comment later. My argument there would be that if you can teach to use to generate better queries, they will also very likely work better on Google anyway. So it's complementary, I would say, to the algorithmic performance. Yeah. And I thought, so, but then, again, the point I'm making is when you do have to use a search engine that isn't Google, and all you've ever learned how to use is Google, it's a problem. Um, so I guess that was Yeah, the yeah, there the are two issues, right? One is uh, um, the one you say, that, and the other is, OK, but now if uh, Google is good because it manages to work with my suboptimal queries. Right? And now suddenly I start giving optimal queries, uh, queries that should be optimal. Are they actually going to work well? I guess because you are trying to teach them the queries that are working well in Google anyway. So if you're giving Google a better representation of your information and it doesn't generate better results, then that seems to me to be strange. Yeah, well, I, I remember uh, when I, I think it was six months that I was a CSR and we were either watching a, a, a talk, Ben and I, a talk online from that, 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 or something like that, and was somebody, uh, some, somebody quite high in Google saying, Oh, or maybe you told me when you came back yeah, from no, Sikkim. It was uh, wisdom. Why? Uh, wisdom, wisdom. Yeah, yeah. this was a panel session yeah. with, it, with it, one of the one of the um, I don't know senior people in the search team was saying in we, Google. We, we wish users would give us natural language queries because we can do better, give better results with natural language queries, but. Okay. Users have always given us short keyword queries, so we've optimized for short keyword queries. Therefore, users give us more short keyword queries. But he, he was saying, if, no, I can see that. If, if we had full natural language queries, it's so more uh, expressive, as you say, we say that representation. Still, if you give the more information to work with in the query, yeah. it should generate a better result, well, regardless of whether it's perhaps they prefer natural language. And yes, we do focus yeah. on keyword based queries mm -hmm. here. Yeah. But if I give you one keyword, it's very ambiguous. Yeah. You know, there's a classic one about Java. If I type the word Java, mm -hmm. you're going to have to do, either you're going to have to know a lot about me and personalize, or you're going to have to you know, work it a bit, and you're going to have to choose a couple of queries that have one meaning the word Java. Mm -hmm. But if I say Java programming, mm -hmm. so problem mm -hmm. solved. But I guess that's kind of the yeah. mm -hmm. And actually, to the point that you said about you know, perhaps Google don't do it that way because they have more data than you I would say they'll definitely do that way. Mm -hmm. But the fact that more data is expensive. The problem is if you try and customize for everyone, it's very expensive. Okay. Uh, okay. Why is it that you know, like just now we're having this conversation and I'm not trying keywords? Why is it that when you go to search you can just search by words? Uh, well, like laziness is certainly one part of it. <laughs> uh, because I think actually because most of the time. And I'm quoting this 95%, but it's out of nowhere, but let's see. It does work. Right? Yeah. Most, I mean, if, if you used Google and were aware of the search engine and 
only two or three times out of ten you got the results you were looking for. You probably would adapt your query behavior. But if it's one time out of you know, 50, probably you're not going to change your query behavior. And I do think a lot of it is because people think, oh, I'm dealing with it. And we're still, I think we're still not used to this idea that we're doing computers with a lot more intelligent. I mean, still, when you hear people using things like Siri on the phone or the watch, they don't actually talk to it like it's a human being. They still talk a little bit keyworded. Um, I think it's because you, you, you know, intuitively know that I'm a human being, and therefore you hope at least I can respond to your question in a reasonably coherent manner without even having to you know, keywordize it. But I think. So, but if we, if we would speak, if we had a new Users that have the same search engine, and we started to talk to what kind of human being would, would, would that provide the raw materials for making search engines? I'm not sure because I think uh, human beings, when we speak, we're not particularly precise usually, right? So there's a lot of noise in what we say, there's a lot of often. Obviously, I'm not. <laughs> so you necessarily fit up, but uh, you know, there's a lot of waffle, and I think the problem is that Google would have to go whatever search engine was, we have to be very careful about what words of that they actually chose to do. Obviously, stop words are just throws away anyway, which is a huge percentage of human speech anyway. I, I think, uh, and I guess that what if you look at how we speak, we don't speak in in the way that you say something and that I find the information you want and give it to you. But you say something, and if, if it's unclear to me, I come back to you and we negotiate the understanding of what information I'm looking for. So we are, we are having a conversation. Yeah. So maybe more than, than looking at uh, a search engine that allows you to speak to him by, you know, by issuing a very verbose queries when you describe and something, it's more important to a, a conversation to negotiate what your information is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have tried that. People get very frustrated with it. The problem is that it's not good at asking the right questions. So I end up asking quite general questions and trying to narrow it down. People get really fed up with it very quickly. But the human's much more intuitive than the people do that. Is that just because it's you know, kind of standard or is it just a good thing to do that? It's like, you know, could you teach a computer to be more or less dumb? Yeah, I think ultimately you could. I think, I mean, there's a lot of work in that uh, in the sort of early 90s and I think because it didn't work so well then, there's a tendency in IR for us to ignore that and maybe, maybe maybe that's the next thing. Maybe you should uh, go back to try to search and uh, do some work in it. I think there's probably scope there, but it's, it's difficult to ask the right questions. It's also it's difficult to really feel for how much intuition you use when you're using something. It's a huge amount of context that you subconsciously you can use in the human being that you know, computers probably want to do that. The other thing I was going to say on this point about you know, querying with Guido and the conversation is uh, Guido doesn't exist purely to answer my information needs, right? It's a human being, so he has other functions in life. Uh, whereas Google essentially just exists to answer my information needs. So it's a slightly different uh, yeah, uh, yeah, in relationship. Yeah, I remember Doug Gordon, a few years ago, did the same. If you search, The way you're communicating to his audience that may not be his audience. So he, and he, he, he thought that we should actually think of that search in that way. And that's, that's why I'm sort of asking these sort of questions. Because it, may be, it may be that we should, in order to sort of, we might need to really conceptualize differently what, what search is in terms of, for example, internet communication. Remember when we had the swirl workshop in 2004? You know that swirl? Uh, as well as uh, there have been two workshops which were meant to uh, map out strategic directions of the information through the field, so not talk about the content, where it where's its heading. And there were two, and I think I remember when the first one, 2004, you know, Bruce Crawford was Bruce Crawford saying, well, essentially, there's, a, there's an identity crisis for what information could, because that's how people have received the Google and sold the search box and that needed to be search in that area. So, so I'm talking about it, and then remember 2012, you were saying that you know, Croft and others were saying, yeah, search has changed, like, um, you know, you query, you get a ranking, and it's it's, it, it, it's not interactional, it's not conversational. 
where we go back to the old rules of trading systems. They would, they, they would be they would, would, results would be stored. You might have several different results in the store. So you would have something more that would, you know, not the primitive form of elements of a conversation. Yeah. And a communication. And then it was before that maybe we actually need to think about the search and so on. To go beyond the current paradigm. But I don't know how much work's been done on it. I've seen it. Again, my suspicion is it's very contextual. So again, most of the cases you don't need to do this. Uh, I think a lot of this cultural is, I mean, nowadays we don't want to generalize it too much, but I think people want things very quickly, and we're used to things happening very, very quickly. You have to have an entire dialogue with the search engine to get your search result. People are probably not going to be willing to engage in that too often. I think it was, a, I think this is where I think it's a very difficult search problem. Then you would need to possibly, it might make sense to have more dialogue. But that would then require probably the search engine to identify whether it's a sufficiently complex search problem to, to necessitate that. But I don't think the user would do that. Yeah, but well, they would do it on Facebook, right? Yeah, so that you, you have conversations on Facebook, and then you, you do that. Yeah, sure. Okay, and then in, in a way, then you're, in, in, in a sense, like sort of draw the, the bow and the line. I think it's interesting in the direction to potentially avoid or some such problems. Isn't this, this the whole problem of context thing? I mean, I saw a thing back in 1978, as soon as I sort of call it databases, where you, you could put in anything you want, like a set of swear words. And so we can strip it down and, and you know, this went out into to essentially um, people who never used computers before and all kinds of different places. And that, I do this also with document management systems. We've got reasonably complex um, queries that because they're highly contextualized, they're usually quite successful. And so it's um Imagine that essentially that's what Google was trying to do, trying to put you in a context bucket. Exactly, yeah. And, and you know, this is really kind of bad. I mean, I use these kinds of things very successfully in all kinds of things. Yeah, the, the new users, effectively, people who only ever had reports. But, so they use the vocabulary, but they've never used computers in this way. But again, that's quite an example where you are, you are projecting, you just need to talk to somebody else but to do you were, better they right were to being educated be more specific. They were essentially being educated. Yeah. Very first generation. Yeah. So I think if you can get users to do that, then you're, you're going to have a better experience overall. Yeah. The problem is that they don't face the privilege. They just go, ah, it doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, particularly as well, I've done a lot of work with HTC uh, student council with younger users when they're subject to children in particular. And they're particularly bad for this in the sense that they, they almost exclusively query once, look at the first five results, if what's not, if what they're looking for is not there, they will say things like, oh, Google must not have it. Is that because they've been told to do things that they couldn't do? I remember my school used to teach us how to use Google. I didn't work with them, put down generally what you want, and then if it doesn't work, then try again or you're not getting it. Uh, I think you know, what if people are more kind of generalized, generalist, you know, slash people, slash people, and 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 Trying to introduce sort of our own in Scotland in a few probably years, the same ones, but we knew. Um, and they're trying to introduce more information that you're saying in schools in Scotland because of this exact problem. You know, there's, a, there's a tacit assumption because children are born at the digital age that they're digital natives and therefore they will get this stuff, and actually they don't. They, they don't really know how to use such engines well. They, they just think they do. Um, yeah, if you were taught that, then that is a problem. 
But I think yeah, and Google does you know, try and do certain things with all these related searches or like if it comes up with related searches it's because your query was quite ambiguous. And it's saying make this less ambiguous for me. But again, it's up to you whether you engage in that. Just so yeah, it didn't work. Fair enough. So that's all. Um, Let you go. I'll, 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 I'll go on a little bit because it's going to be like, uh, it's yeah. going to be like next month. <laughs> um, so, uh, our question was actually so obviously, you can teach people how to use theory, how to use good search engines better. You can do information literacy, uh, teaching, and so on, but that's complicated. One more thing to report. So, we thought actually, can we teach users good career behavior by example? Right? Not giving them a set of rules saying if you have this problem, do this. By showing them examples of good query behavior. And um, so we looked in the literature, there's a little bit of literature that says that you can, um, so Mark would train the users how to construct complex queries. And they show, this is looking at the top before, so quite old, you actually can change such behavior if you get construction, um, which is encouraging. There's also some work a bit more recently by Bayon et al., uh, 2012, that showed that if you allow users to compare their search behavior with that of export searches, then it will reflect on their behavior and potentially change it. And this is what we're kind of interested in doing. Right? We can show them what exports would have done, and they can reflect on how that's different to what they did. Maybe they can extrapolate something useful from that. Right? So that was the idea. Um, again, there was a lot of coffee and we were in Ireland, so there's probably a lot of Guinness as well. Just in Belgium, but um, the first research question had is: Are users able to notice the differences between good queries and their own, perhaps less good queries? And more importantly, can they abstract these differences? Right? It's no good if they can just say, "Yeah, I can see there's a difference, but I have no idea what it is." Obviously. Um, and more importantly, how effectively can they learn and abstract from these good queries? And do users who are trained, so to speak, who are shown these good queries, can they then take that forward and improve their own search? to this uh, knowledge. This is what we're interested in seeing. Uh, so uh, this is just introduced to, we built a, a search interface with this. Uh, any resemblance whatsoever in terms of naming to any famous search engines, probably by coincidence. Um, so this is, this is the same. Um, and you'll notice the idea is it's a fairly generic search interface. It's not too different from what you expect for Google, Bing, Yahoo, and so on. It's a search box and it's the links. Uh, but the obvious difference here is that we have these, uh, these queries here. It's a slightly different presentation from how uh, query uh, suggestions are normally made, but it's a bit of an idea. And we just said the following examples of very effective queries for this task. Click one to try it out. I'll explain this in a bit more detail later on to show you how we're thinking of presenting this to you. Uh, so, uh, in order to do this, to find out to investigate these research questions, we came up with a few studies. Obviously, the first thing we need to do is generate these training queries. We need to generate queries for tasks that are good, and then we know are good. Right? And also, we have to define what are good things in this instance, but we'll do that. So, um, what we actually did is if we use TREK, which we did, um, we obviously have relevance judgments for large sampling of documents. Um, if we assume that TREK works fairly well, uh, then we know essentially what the right answers are, and therefore we can say how good any given query is. Right? It's a whole idea of track, uh, it's a whole idea of so such evaluation. Uh, so, what we did is we built a kind of very simple 3D algorithm to generate these queries. And all it did is it took for any given track topic, um, it uh, took the, all the developed documents, built a language model from that, and choose, chose the highest ranking term. So, I mean, the, the, multiplied the TF by the idea term, and we chose the top 100, and we started these off as single word queries. We then ran each of those single word queries uh, through the search engine, and then checked to see what the performance of each of those queries was. Right? And then the top 10 queries by performance, of the single word ones, we kept those, and then we tried to append to those, and we greedily chose the best terms to append on to those, and we built them up to uh, four. So we had, uh, for each trend topic, we had basically 40 queries. We had 10 one-word queries, 10 two-term queries, 10 two-word queries. And you can see with this, you can greedily build up pretty good search queries. 
Now, the issue with this, of course, is while these are, from a systematic perspective, very good queries, they generate, uh, this is by the way, the forms just in terms of average position. Yeah, here we go. Yes. So, your interface again, right? It had the 10, ten blue links. Yes. Did it have pagination? Uh, I said 20 blue links. 20 blue links? Did I have pagination? No, no pagination. So, why average precision? Why not? Uh, NDCG, ERR, whatever, at 20. So since, we, since, since you only showed 20. So actually, it's, 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 it's precision at 20. Ah, OK. So it, it, uh, average it's, precision at 20. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, so we sort of thought of it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fair point. So it's all right. Um, so this gives our high quality queries. But of course, the problem with these is they might just be high quality. So machine you might be terrible. To so, um, I'm this. Um, so the first thing we wanted to do is we wanted to ask users, how do you perceive these queries? Do you think they're good? Uh, do you, would you use them yourself? Were you surprised by them? Right? Do they look horrible uh, computer generated to you, or do they look reasonable? So what we did was we did a user study. Um, we used a uh, Cloudflare, um, so. Outsourcing, and we paid a measly 12 cents for 10 tasks. Uh, and we only restricted the cheap people. Yeah, well, it worked. It, it, these did not run for long. It was like half an hour. It was done. Mm -hmm. um, we restricted the countries where English is the main language because our reason for that was that if we want to look at query behavior, you should have a reasonable understanding of the language you're querying in. So, because you might want to choose synonyms and you know, generalized terms and more specific terms. So, we don't. so or to remove a variable, so to speak. Um, and um, for each information need, for expediency reasons, we just chose the top 15 queries that could be generated, so we put the 10 best and one with precision 20. Um, and each query was judged by four workers, so that we can do some voting. Um, and first thing we asked was how much of the top of the information needs. We asked them how surprised are you by the generated queries, or do you think it's a bit strange given the topic? Um, Importantly, would you use this suggestion in actual search? So it's one thing to say I'm not surprised by this, but it's another thing to say yes, I would use it. Um, and very related question, but how good do you think the results of such given this query would be for this information? Right, so we asked the users, and obviously have a lot of judgments here. Um, just to get an idea of some of the topics, those of you who are used to Trek have probably seen these topics before. The Hubble one comes up a lot, there's three gorges down. Uh, but just to give you an idea, there's one about identifying positive accomplishments in Hubble since it was launched in 1991. And people's knowledge of this on average was, was pretty decent. They weren't massively surprised by the such queries that were returned, and they thought they'd be quite high quality. This is just averages out of five by the time scale. Uh, suggestions on the right gives you an example of some of the queries that were generated automatically for this topic. And you can see they're, they don't look human generated, they look computer generated, but they seem Fairly reasonable. Um, if you look at the bottom one, however, this is on the status of the Three Gorges project, which we don't know it's a hydroelectric dam in China rebuilt. Uh, people didn't know a lot about this at all. So this uh, 1.5 AB really didn't know about this topic. And what we found is when people didn't know a lot about the topic, they found the search queries surprising. And they also said that it was likely to be less good. Um, so this just gives you an idea of how people were thinking. If you look at how surprised people were, um, people were on average not massively surprised. So very often, most of the queries, if you look at all of them, people thought, okay, these are kind of reasonable, I'm not sure why this. Um, this is where people are going to get upset here, but we took from this that sort of indicated our query generation method is fairly, probably shouldn't use the word valid, but uh, fairly efficacious. Um, surprisingly, though, if we look at how high quality the users thought the result, such results would be given these queries that they said weren't surprising to the topic, they thought, yeah, not great. We didn't think they would be fantastic. Which is very surprising because we know these are good queries. Yes? Sorry, maybe I missed it, but did, did they know beforehand that these were generated queries? So they, so we just said, here's the search problem, yeah. and here's a query for it. Yeah. Are you surprised by this? Do you think it's good? Yeah. So, yeah, so they didn't have a notion that a person created this all. It was done automatically. 
Because then you're kind of uh, biasing. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 If I'm being honest, they could probably get. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, some yeah. of them not. Uh, so, so when when you show these to your workers, mm -hmm. right, what do you show? You show the, the topic yeah. title. You show also the topic description. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So go go back. So I guess you know if I look at this previous uh, and I think how surprised I am by this previous, I'm like oh, crap. I'm very surprised. Because you know, identify drugs used in the treatment of mental illness. Huh? If I need to come up with a query, I will never come up with a query. Zoloff studies problem, right? No. Um, um, and so yes, I see why they were surprised because probably Zoloff and Prada, okay, especially Zoloff, uh, are wearing the topic description. Uh, I don't think they are actually. So I think they just knew that these were uh, treatment. Treatments for mental illness. Uh, I mean, I think this is US specific, right? I think this is what it's yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah, but you see. You're right, I think. That's yeah, a little bit the, surprising. the surprise might be very much determined by whether the terms appeared in the topic description or not. Yeah, and that's all I'm talking about. In this case, it, it, it definitely been, um, they just happened to that they are very good. So, this is a good example of where yeah, it's choosing ones that are statistically good, but. Yeah, good. yeah. So, if I think. Would I be able to write the query all of studies product? Yeah? No, I wouldn't. Yeah. Right? Although I don't think I'm a very tough user, maybe not very expert either, but not. Yeah, I, I well, don't see how. The I question could, we were saying is, well, but from this, did you learn order, that it's useful? You might learn that it's useful to use specific drugs. This is the point. Yeah. I'm not going to generate that exact query. Yeah. But you might then learn from that that actually you need to be specific. Yeah, or you might want to be specific. Yeah, and and look, uh, you know, if you take it as a bag of word, Zoloff studies project, bag of word, yeah, not only. But if you start, if you take it as a an actual query, and when you write query, you write things in a sequence because you want them in a sequence, huh? right? You you not often write queries thinking as a bag of word. Then if you write Zoloff studies project, yeah, you're writing. Studies as a verb, Zoloff as a subject, and project as the, as the object. Right? Uh, yeah, rather, well, if, if instead you write. As a tool, yeah, 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 but then instead you, you are, that really works because it's Zoloff project studies. You, 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 see, you see my point? Yeah, yeah. the order is not. So, so, you know, the way I interpret that query is different from the way that query is actually used in the search engine. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's yeah. all the things. I mean, so I mean, yeah. you'll see we, have, we actually use this uh, results of this study to so fit that back into the Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I agree. I mean, I found the three gorgeous question. That's a very unusual experience. I've never used something like that. So, okay. And, and you know, know, if I need to judge the how surprised I am by the query, if I, if I, if I you show me the query, Zal of studies product, I'm extremely surprised. If you show me the query, Zal of product studies, Oh, no, I'm not that surprised. Yeah. Uh, but you know. Yeah, we didn't we didn't try a You see what I'm going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you permute it, yeah. yeah, you didn't permute because you just uh, um, just add the terms in sequence according to how much uh, uh, gain you incremental get. gain you get. Yeah. Right. No, you could permute it if you want to. Uh, yeah, yeah, you that, that, that's kind of the point. These ones with three gorgeous but a lot of excellent queries, they look very strange. Mm. Yeah. Right. The ones for Hubble, for example, okay, they don't still look entirely human, but it seems fair. And that's kind of why we want to look at this study. But you'll see why it's saying And also, these are averages, so mm -hmm. yeah. some of these groups are better than those. Yeah. Um, so, the expected result for uh, calls is fairly average, which suggests humans are not brilliant at determining how good a query will be. Very are all good from, from a results point of view. Um, and then the really big one is, would you actually use this such group? Uh, this is the real question. And uh, people said, no. God, no. Terrible. Uh, some they said, so four and five, some they said yes. And this was actually one of the useful things in doing this study. Because, basically, many of our suggestions are not. Which, having just seen them, is probably not surprising to you. Right? Uh, and this is, so taking it forward, 
imagine if we just look at the queries that were four and five, and we say that these are humans think these are quite good. And the ones that are one and two are humans, although they're very good queries from a systems perspective, humans think it's terrible. I'm trying to remember that like, before, before later on. Uh, okay. Uh, so this is probably not surprising. You might find it pretty challenging. The average knowledge rating is quite low. I don't know if this says more of a threat than anything else, but uh, the probably unsurprisingly broad topics people find easier. Uh, very specific ones people will average quite well. This is not surprising. You might just at random get a user who knows a lot of three gorgeous project, but on average you probably um, Most queries were at least somewhat expected, so the surprise rating was not high. Um, and again, unsurprisingly, there was a high correlation between, uh, well, there's an inverse correlation between uh, surprise and uh, how, general, how general the group was. So if it was a very general group, we were less surprised. Um, and very few were judged to be high quality. Um, and nearly 70% were judged to be very, very low quality. Um, so we're going to now look at the ones that were very, very high quality. Very Use those later on in studies. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is obviously. Can I interrupt you? Sorry. Do you have stopped? So yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, we, have, we have a question from Anton. Yes. The question from Anton, I missed it, sorry, was referring to your slides ago. But the okay. one, another one I want to say there is that he says the queries appear premeditated. You would, uh, um, you would have to know the answer. The question in order to post the query. Of course, that's how you generate them. But you knew the answer, you took the random up and you chose the language model of the Yeah. But uh, this doesn't seem reasonable. Uh, they could never learn this in the sense that uh, um, uh, to teach people how to write queries, you can't uh, teach people to write the answer before they know. No, the but answer. again, the point is not necessarily that we will generate these exact queries, but they could be doing this way. Extrapolate something, some characteristic of these queries that makes mm. them good. Mm. And if you remember, I mean, a lot of the hypothesis and information tables, when you are querying what you really should be doing, is you should try to imagine the documents that you want to find, and the, in theory, yeah. and the terms that are in those documents are the ones that you use in the query. Yes, but, in the, but the question then becomes, huh, I guess, becomes, are actually these terms that are very good discriminant for these relevant documents? Are they actually terms that they do make sense for the topic, or are just you know? Yeah, is it, that, how likely it is that I can come up with that term, a very discriminant term, given this information that I have? So this is the point. I mean, for some of them, not fair. Like, so if you keep up with the Zola one, I absolutely agree. I have no idea what that was. The ones for the. Uh, Oh, one, oh, I can come up. Yeah. Well, don't Yes, we don't. We, we have no idea. But if you go to a doctor, maybe that's what he will enter yeah, because he knows that. Most likely, but we're mm -hmm. we think it's okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it may, these are all valid points. And let's say we weren't expecting this to generate massive realistic queries, but we just want to generate good ones and see. I mean, this could have all failed miserably. Yeah. Now, given yeah. the talking about it, you're going to probably guess it didn't. But. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, you, you know, I'm, I'm not criticizing methodology. Yeah. No, uh, I mean, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just thinking um, why, why, or you know, I'm just trying to interpret the results. So yeah. a, lot, a lot, of them are um, good because, statistically speaking, those were descriptive. Yeah. But yeah, humans are yeah. this term. I mean, obviously, if you use a term like so, well, it's very descriptive. You're going to be discounting a huge percentage of them. Um, so next we wanted to pilot things, so I'll tell you a little more about it. Um, again, it's not a hugely complicated interface, but obviously you have your search task going on inside here, so you can, and it gives you the uh, track topic and then also the descriptions of what you're looking for. Um, and then they can go on to the next topic if they want to, but only after I'm putting a minimum of three queries, because then want to just, you know, we're paying them, so we want to do something. Um, so that was the to the topic. Um, you can input your search query here. Obviously, there were no search suggestions uh, that were populated here when you type in the search query. Um, and the interesting thing is, the only thing that's very different from 
Google or Yahoo or Bing, is obviously we know the right answers to these uh, problems. And therefore, the ones that have the sort of that blue background uh, are the ones that are correct for uh, identifying the being relevant and the judge to be relevant. And we told the users beforehand that this was the case. So that was what we were trying to do. And um, you can see here that the, these are the suggestions that we were given. These were the queries. Um, more is we showed these after the users got the end of two queries. So they got a bit of a chance to play around the system before we showed them the optimal ones. Um, and we checked to make sure that any queries that we showed them were at least 10% better in terms of our position than any query they had themselves. So that you didn't have a situation where we were getting the queries to watch them earlier or they themselves. That would be confusing. Um, and then users could click on these if they want to see what the, what the result is. And we tried to sort of gamify it a bit so you get a kind of score of how well you were doing. Um, two measures how many relevant documents you managed to get on the first 20. And uh, also this uh, average, this precision average. We didn't call it that because we're average users. But as we just call it subject to the score. A quick question, sorry. Um, maybe not that quick. So users could click on the link and, and look at the documents, right? You could. Yeah. And they, they, you didn't control for the quality of the snippets, obviously. You just use whatever search engine yeah, you're using background that you see. Yeah. Exactly. So, did you actually observe, maybe this coming later, but did you actually observe the user clicking on the highlighted blue links? Uh, and yes. And I don't have uh, statistics for that. Yeah, then you observe that. Yeah. And clicking on the irrelevant as well? Uh, they, you, you no, when I think I'm, they did, 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 you, did they click on the ones that were highlighted? Yeah, highlight yeah well, where I'm going is, is uh, you know, if if they looked at relevant in the relevant documents, then they obviously might have learned something. And so, you know, the first query is whatever it is, the second query might improve because of that. If it's instead that they don't and they just look at the snippets, they might not learn that much, especially because your snippets are not necessarily good snippets. They are, you know, losing the fault generated. Uh, and the thing I just is, wonder, again, right? literature, there's a lot of evidence when we do look at query formulation, a large number of the terms that are used to reform are from the snippets that are okay. to be relevant. Okay. Um, there's a lot of also eye tracking studies that show this to be the case. Okay. So very often, in fact, there's a really nice paper here uh, last year um, by Tilt something. Um, but um, where it showed that actually you can, if you, can, if you do eye tracking, if you Look at the terms people fixate on in snippets, then you can actually build a better relevance model for the next mm. research. Because these ones that you fixate on are the ones that they will probably use themselves to augment the mm. uh, Which is, is custom. Ah, custom, yeah. Um, so this is where we thought with the snippets. We, we didn't click, well, we didn't encourage them to click the button. They could have won because we, we thought it would be strange. They're used to being able to click the button until something happens. But then, so we gave them that option, but there wasn't a huge amount of just mm -hmm. not surprising. Because you see, um, I'm just wondering, I'm the user, what's my perceived task here? Is it to, to you know, um, understand my information need, to solve my information need? Is it to maximize my score? Yeah, that's right? what we're working to do. Is to maximize maximize my score. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of to remove the focus from evaluating documents more to evaluating queries. What we're trying to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We didn't want to spend hours and hours evaluating documents. Yeah. So that was the basic idea. Um, and so what we did was that we uh, looked at how good these uh, optimal queries were, and we discarded any topics that were incredibly easy, where the optimal queries were almost getting 99. 0.99 precision or something like that. We discarded the ones where even multiple groups struggled. Because there are some trend tasks that are just incredibly difficult. So we discarded the, the top 25 and the bottom 25. And then we just chose 10 at random for the rest. These are reasonably not too easy topics, but not too hard. We then got 22 students from a large group of university. Uh, actually, these were day students. There's going to be some benefit to being a lecturer, right? You can get students to do things you want capable to do. Um, and uh, each of them were given this interface, and they were given these 10 topics. Um, 
And what happened in this case when we were trying to pilot it is if they clicked on one of the suggestions that were given, they were asked to uh, provide a reason. Why did they choose to use that suggestion? Why did they think it was good? So what we actually asked them is, uh, you use the suggested query and you put the query in the clip. Considering your previous queries for this topic, which we showed below, uh, what do you think it is about the suggested query that makes it so effective? Uh, uh, what we did is we got 81 descriptions from the users from this. Um, yeah, seven of the students didn't engage in this at all, so they were chopped off the course and we never heard from them again. Um, but the remaining 15 were really nice and they, uh, very helpful and did say some description. And then we used some advantage diagram to reduce these down and look dimensionality uh, to find reoccurring themes. And the ones that, were, that came up the most often were um, using more specific query terms, using more general query terms. Uh, using terms that were not present in the top description, but people identified this was happening. Um, thinking creatively using advanced vocabulary, using synonyms and related concepts, and using good combinations of search terms. And if you actually look in the literature about what export users do, this is almost the exact list of what the literature says that export users do. So we were very pleased about this. And this gave us a little bit of confidence that yes, users can extrapolate something about the characteristics of these, of these groups. Uh, there's some evidence for that. And again, this is somewhat to what comes up in the future. And what also came up in the study, if we looked at performance, uh, is this. Uh, basically, fatigue sets in. Uh, this is not the most exciting task in the world, however much we try to gain the fire. Um, and if you look, uh, there's a bit of variation, but we'll start off working fairly hard, and then by this point, we're starting to get look at where the mediums are, and we're all sitting by the bottom there. So uh, based on this, for the full study, we shortened it from 10 topics to 6 topics, so people were really getting very, very good. Did you put a time limit for each topic? We didn't put a time limit. No time limit, and then, so do you know more or less how long they were going for? Or they were going for, say, one hour, two hours? Uh, I can't remember off, it was something like between 10 and 15 minutes. Okay. So per topic? No, no, I didn't. In total? Yeah. So, so, so you could quickly. Yeah, so they can borrow quickly. So, yeah. so they, well, they're, they're undergraduate students. No, no, but that, that's good. <laughs> yeah. they, they, that's good to learn Sorry. that, uh, that uh, you know, um, 15 minutes, the top of what you can engage them for. It was interesting. Also, if you looked at the amount of time they engaged, it went down with pretty much the same pattern. So, initially, we were spending two or three minutes for a topic, and by the end, we were spending about 20 minutes. Which also explains why. And you always like you uh, between across participants, you randomize the order of yeah. the topics. So so it's not topic no, 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 no. I mean, obviously, if you look at data, there were uh, topics that were less interesting than others, and they tended to have, but that's all. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, we randomize it, so this is purely. Um, so uh, this would then led us to do the main study, which is the one we had to pay for, so we wanted to check it was the paper. Um, so we had for three groups designed. So we had three groups, and obviously these were randomly assigned. And these are the three groups. So if you remember back a few slides ago, I said we had these, we had all these high quality queries, but we said there were some that users thought were high quality and liked, and some that they thought were very, very poor. So what we did is we had two experimental groups, um, GXP, GXP high, and GXP low. And these were these groups were shown the high quality queries, but the high group were shown the ones that were judged by users to be good, um, and the low group were shown queries that were judged by users to be poor, to be good use themselves. So we wanted to see if this actually made a difference. Um, and then obviously there was a control group, the third group, who were never ever shown any of the high quality groups. Right? They were just asked to do it. Okay, um, we took six information needs, again, because of this fatigue thing, we were just 10, and of course, again, we were shown these things. Order. Um, we used Crowdflower to get participants and they were paid 50 cents each, which you might think is miserly, but it's not, it's not so bad. They snapped on pretty quickly. And again, these uh, participants were from English speaking countries. Um, and we had 91 participants in total, 29 in one group, 24 in the second group, and 28 in the control group. Uh, and this is basically how it works. So the uh, two test groups here, the HP high and the HP low, for the first four topics, this is what we call the training phase, 
It was just fine with the students. They were, after some nights of inquiries, they were shown the high quality ones and said, oh, you can use these if you want. And then for the final two topics, they were never shown any uh, suggested queries, and they were top of the okay? The control group in their hand were never, ever shown high quality queries at any point, so they just were top of the group. Other than that, the interfaces were identical. So the fact that you have a different number of users per group suggests to me that you had to do some data cleaning. No, it's because the, uh, well, there was, yeah, there was some people just said they participated. Because it was a random assignment, some people participated and didn't actually do it. Yeah. So yeah, there was a lot of data cleaning. Ah, so, so you just excluded uh, those that didn't really do anything. You didn't, you didn't find some that were having malicious type of behavior, or, you know, no, they no, were just trying to get the 50 cents and they just were clicking around. It was a surprising lack of that, actually. Okay. Um, I mean, we actually used Cloudflare on the basis of Cloudy. I've done a lot of work on yeah. it. She found for whatever reason, people on that were a lot more professional than yeah, the same the yeah. uh, Also, 50 cents is a reasonable pay, so if you yeah. get that, it's, it's, not, it's not terrible to spend 10 minutes. It's next to me. It's yeah. done. Um, no, there wasn't a lot of evidence to that, so we didn't clean any users because of it. Well, no, we just uh, removed those that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. What we really should have done is we should have looked at the ones that performed the examples we wanted to write, hypothesis to be correct, and then remove the ones. Yeah, so sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I assure you we didn't. <laughs> um, yeah, because we didn't have 100. But then you would have ended up with three people on the group. Yeah, right. Many different known ones. Yeah. Or three people in one group with 14 other So this was the overall study design. Uh, and this is what you've all come here for. This is the, the main results of the study. Uh, so if we look at this, um, what's left hand see on side of the brain, this was during the training phase. Right? So this is uh, where uh, they have three groups, and they basically perform the same. Right? It's not surprising because they've just been randomly assigned to these groups. Right? And here we're just looking. By the way, all these were just looking at the first two queries for each iteration. Because obviously, after we've been shown the good ones, they can just copy the notes. So that's but you can see pretty much there's no statistically significant difference between the two groups at this point in time. Right? I mean, in the GHB high, just by random, they perform slightly better, but it's, there's no statistical difference. All the but then if we go on to the testing phase, right? It's, yes. So in the training phase, they were shown a query, but in, they obviously could. Click on these queries, right? Yeah, but only after they submit to. I uh, only need to the first two queries. Yeah, but just the first All we would just do for the first yeah. two, otherwise, yeah, 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 yeah. obvious yeah. problem there. Um, if we then look at the testing phase, however, then you can see there's big differences between the groups. And these are now significant. Um, you can see that basically the control group actually they perform, they perform worse than they did before. So it both was a little bit of fatigue setting in. But you can see actually that the high and the low groups, even though it's getting near the end and the fatigue starts to set in, they have actually improved their performance relative to when they started. Um, and this is, again, a significant. Uh, what wasn't significant though was there was no difference significant, uh, statistically between the two different experimental groups. So it seems like showing them queries that people said were not very good doesn't make a huge difference, even if you know, people said they weren't good. But they are indeed good such queries algorithmically speaking, so we're assuming we can extract out something from this. Now we're wondering if we did this with a larger number of users. It does look like there's a trend starting to set in here. It's just not significant. It looks like these guys are performing a little bit better, but I can't say for sure. So maybe if we had more users, that might turn into significance. So there might be a difference. Um, if we then look at look at it over um, so this is in the then phase the testing phase, if we look at over successive queries for the same topic, we're aggregating them all here, you can basically see what happens. So initially, the three groups perform pretty similarly. The difference is that the control group just doesn't really get any better. They've not learned how to build better queries. They keep submitting more poor queries. On the other hand, as you can see, the two experimental groups, while initially they start off on this one, they've obviously learned how to draw terms we don't know that why, but they learned perhaps how to draw terms from the snippets, they wanted to draw terms from the documents, something is clicked with them. And as you know, time goes on, they spend more time queuing the same topic, 
their performance is, is unusable. So we thought this was a very interesting result. Um, uh, we wanted to also look at some other metrics for achieving performance, not just uh, how well we're doing on top of So uh, we want to look at the literature for what defines good queries and what makes them different from poor queries. Right? And we define some, we've discovered some metrics for this. Um, things like query length, for example, obviously we would ideally want people to submit slightly higher, more specified queries and longer queries. Um, so we've looked at that how the performance was across the different groups for this. Um, the first thing you can see is, obviously, in the experimental groups, we are submitting longer groups. Um, and uh, this was significant in one case, the control group submit slightly shorter groups. So they learned to submit slightly longer groups. So week 29 means 29 characters. Yeah, yes. yeah not words. Uh, <laughs> they weren't just putting paragraphs in. It's totally experts, and it's like um, we're also looking, this is the really important thing, the amount of time we're spending on top. Sorry. It's odd to look at characters. Do you know how many query, uh, query words? Uh, there are, I think there was no significant So they're submitting longer terms. They're not submitting more terms necessarily. Just the longer term. Perhaps more specified yeah. terms. Yeah, yeah, if we assume that longer terms are more specific terms, more descriptive terms, and so on. Yeah. 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 So it seems that that's really what we're doing. Whereas people in the control group are uh, just like the attendees. Um, so um, this metric here was basically uh, how unusual the terms were that people were using. So if we took all of the terms that uh, all of the users were using for a given uh, search query and we count how many times that term appears, this is the average count. So it's basically saying that the control group are using much more common terms. They're using terms that the rest of the group are using more often, whereas the other two groups were using slightly more different terms. They weren't just using the same as everyone else. So maybe they were thinking a little bit more uh, about how they would want to do it. So there was more, yeah, there was more variation of science yeah. across the, the good performing ones. Then. And, uh, um, and we also wanted to look at, are they just taking uh, terms from the topic description? Um, so we looked at the Jacquard coefficient between the queries and the topic descriptions. And although it doesn't look like I may have, I may have miscopied here, there was a significant difference um, between the higher and low and the higher and control here. So basically there was, uh, they were actually taking more terms from the topic description than the control group. It's interesting. Not uh, if we also look at the median number of queries per topic, um, there wasn't really a massive difference. The people in the high group were querying a little bit more than the people in the low group, but there wasn't a huge difference here. So that was kind of surprising. It's not that they're querying a lot more, they are just querying better. Um, which was always kind of interesting. It was a surprising result. Um, I always hate it when I do this with slides. I've done really nice things like this for a <laughs> Um, the next thing that we wanted to do, this was added on to, because we'd seen this fatigue, that people said, okay, well, what if you give them less training? Right? It's probably, probably all the thing. Uh, we gave them four training topics, what if you give them fewer training topics? Does it work too well? Does it not work quite as well? So, what we did this time uh, was that. Uh, I should use the two as well. We, this time we only gave them two training Hang topics. Can, can I stop you? Question yes. from Anton. Uh, could you please confirm what the participants were asked to do and the goal of the exercise are they were told? So the gamification part. Yep, so basically what they were told <laughs> is that you're going to be given some uh, search box information needs. We would like you to write queries that you think would find the most relevant uh, information. Mm -hmm. And 
basically said, you know, challenge yourself, try and improve upon your existing groups, so try and make it and they were giving that scoring feedback, yeah? Yes, so that, that, that little things on the right hand side to say, to tell them as a feedback of how good they were creating. Exactly. And that's what all the groups were giving that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if we look at this, actually, what we found was even if you just give them two training topics, um, the two experiment groups still outperform the control group, but not by as much. Right? Which, if this is doing what we think it is, is what you would expect to happen. Right? They're not being given quite as much training. Right? So if you spend one year in university, or you spend four years in university, you would hope that you're paying for it, that uh, four years would give you a bit more knowledge and be able to extrapolate that very well. And this is basically saying the same thing. If you give more training examples, you'll do it slightly better. So it does suggest that learning takes place, but relative improvements are smaller than less training. Which is good. It would be odd if it were the opposite. Right, if, they, if they did even better when they got less evidence to do that. So you can see here, it's still significant. It's not quite as strong, you can see this here, that you're not reaching quite the same lofty highs that those, that's like the reds and blacks that they did before, but they're still out of the corner So it's still significant. So, uh, so to conclude, uh, what we're going through is interesting is a little bit of contradiction here. So on one hand, it's quite clear that people are able to learn from good queries to improve their own queries, but they're not great at identifying what good queries are. If you tell them they're good, they can learn from them. But if you say what's a good query, what's a bad query, they're not so good. And this has been shown in Russia before, so even after the night, supervised by the PhD, there's done a lot of work on this and shown that people are dialogue and they from people to good and bad queries, which is surprising. But it is interesting that if you do show them, if you tell them they're good. But you see, going back to what we were saying before, I wonder if it's surprising or not in this, that, that they cannot judge if it's a good query or not. That's not but, surprising. Yeah, it's not surprising. Even, yeah. The contradiction is surprising that they can uh, start with yeah. It's not necessarily a contradiction, but it's slightly. Yeah. Um, so, I was also, so actually, we, we wrote this in the paper, and I think this could be a little bit strong, so feel free to bat me over the head with this. Uh, I would say our results are indicating that you are able to adapt to the behavior of the source systems. Maybe. Right? But I think what it's definitely shown is that they can somehow determine and extrapolate characteristics of high performance queries and adapt their own behavior to apply those characteristics to their own behavior. Um, and uh, they can learn how to use a source system more effectively if we show them how to use that system more effectively. So if we give them good examples of use, Good behavior, then they themselves can actually improve. So, yes. Uh, do you compare how they improve their query, whether it's using by accepting the suggestion mm -hmm. or by doing their own kind of query, which is better? I mean, they get better results by doing the similar thing as you suggest, as the query suggestion, or they can simply formulate something longer in their own language. In their own query style, the user? Um, so, if they just did, so there's no evidence that they were doing massively longer queries. They were doing long, they were longer terms, but they weren't using more terms. So, they weren't just moving, they weren't just learning to build longer queries, they were using terms that they were so And the terms is their own terms, or is it chosen uh, picked from the query situation? Oh, well, again, the, the point is that the, the last two ones just the yeah, yeah. Um, let me interpret what you said because I actually I think is 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 a good point. So yeah, so you know, in the testing phase, users weren't shown the query suggestions, and they put some queries which perform better. Did you take the queries the user put and compare them to the query suggestion you would suggest oh, if the if you were going to suggest? Uh, you, you see what I mean? No, right? but you yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. It's yeah. a good point. You wish you would have. It's a good point. Yeah, I'm just going to. And, yeah, it wasn't this one. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah. So that's a good point. That would be yeah, a that's, a, that's actually a really good point. Yeah. And one, one more thing. Now I realize. So you have looked at uh, query length in number of words, huh? and you are not observing that 
that the query length in number of words increases, your, your survey increases in number of characters, mainly because the suggestions you give are constrained in the length, because you only take, you only chain them up to three, three times, four, four query terms, right? Yeah. And then you wonder if you were going to suggest even longer queries, very, very long queries, would they, would they adapt and would they adapt to writing very long queries? The so other thing is, if I remember, I think the median query, if I remember well, the median query length, uh, very minor more than that in groups, was almost identical to what uh, showed in the literature to be normal for web search. Okay. So they weren't changing the behavior in that regard. So I think yeah, yeah, but you were showing the median we length, length too. No, we were showing them most of the queries we showed them were three and four in length. Ah, okay. And they were certainly queries that were two, two or three. Or maybe three in length. Yeah. They weren't, but yeah, you're right. Maybe if we showed them all these queries that were ten in length, they would still don't think they'd write them if they were ten in length, we might write them to four in length. Yeah, that's a possibility. Yeah. yeah. So, sure. This was an interesting thing. So we, we have to ask again, we did expect it to be a larger difference between these two groups. But the difference, I suppose, here is in the study where we asked them to evaluate the quality of the query, we didn't tell them they were good. We just said it could evaluate the quality of this query. Yeah. But now, even with the role group, we're saying this is a good query. Yeah. Right? So I think it's surprising, but if you remember going back, yes. you know, it's also just kind of Figure out what was going on, what, what, how that was playing out. There does still seem to be, again, it's not significant yeah, because yeah. there's not enough, I suspect, yeah, not enough is insight. Fine. There is still, it looks to be a difference in groups, possibly. If you have more uh, data, then perhaps that might be not significant. So maybe they are more, it's making it more difficult to perform perhaps because things are slightly more esoteric. So did, did you get any quality feedback when you first did the study? The higher load, did you get them to explain why? Did you ever ask that question? Why they perceived it? Why they perceived it that they wouldn't use it all? So, we didn't in that study, most things we wanted to data. It's much better. Dave students, when they ran the study, a few of them commented, okay, you're telling me this is a good query, but it, it seems very esoteric. So, the, the words that they used with these were very specific. It's like what you said. These are very specific terms that I myself wouldn't know. But they did comment that they said, okay, maybe I wouldn't know that term specifically, but it might, it might encourage me to think more deeply about more specific terms than I could do. Do you think that, I'm asking you to speculate here, maybe this is a lot of speculation. Is, it, is there anything here that, that you can there is this thing where you, you understand that you have to use a query? If there's something you think that you could never produce yourself, it doesn't put you off. Yeah, it doesn't put you off. So if you do believe this is something I could come up with, like, you know, mm. then there's yeah. almost like, do you think that, that like, it's almost like a psychological? Yeah, I suspect there's a very good chance that that's the case. And I suspect this is where we're going again. Keep stressing this, but it's not significant. I suspect that's why there is this, there's a bit this difference coming up. It's, it probably is a bit off putting. I'm trying to remember if there's another. I mean, they do, again, it's not much that is significant, they do spend less time on topic than this group. So this, the group we're showing them more often, do spend less time on topic than those who are showing high quality. So maybe that's an effect of this psychology that they think it's less likely that they will be able to perform that well. Possibly. But that may explain that. Um, and then since it's a talk, this is what you always do, and you, let's be honest, you're disappointed. You've never quite been back, but then the future works out. Um, um, and unusually, because you always do, you always do this at conferences, you never do any future work. Or if it's great, it's years years ago. Well, you don't tell the future work that you're in this room really interesting. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So this is, this is not what we're going to do, but we could do. Uh, feel free yourself, we have fair ideas. This is, this uh, is the NSC thesis. Yeah, this is what I'm giving. This is what I'm giving my master's students to do. That's exactly. Uh, uh, so it's a very generic one, but 
we're interested in what is also the case in other consumption models. So we give people different document collections, different topics, different problems. These were very much ad hoc web search tasks. If you did it with eight search lines of the it would be expensive to do. But would you get some more kind of results? Uh, so that would be interesting to look at. I'm going to speculate to depending on the context. In some cases, probably not. Speculate to search lines are already very good. Um, you know, that question came up a lot, and this is a fair one, is, okay, that's fine, but you're basically not doing this more maturity at all. Right? If we came back with the same users two weeks later, is there going to be this difference between the groups? Right? Okay, they can learn it in a short period, but do they actually, does it change behavior? That would be interesting, uh, but again, different. Um, and uh, something we didn't really look at, we just presented them to, to the list of the like, is there a more effective way to present these models? Possibly. That would be a nice HCI problem. Uh, how do you present these in a more effective way? You might find the works on uh, One thing that we uh, did actually look at is how much does trust uh, the system with our models? And this probably touches a little bit on what you were saying, the psychological element. If you trust that you can get good results from the system, do you work hard on it? That's especially difficult to do. Uh, so we did actually build an experiment where we tried to test this out, but I think we just didn't uh, the size. So what we did was we gave uh, people the same search interface, and we had a little tagline at the top saying, uh, saying 96% of users said this was better than Google. And the other group was saying, yeah, saying most people said Google was better. Um, and we wanted to know, does that actually change how they query? It? It, well, you, you, you should have changed the logo. Yeah, so you I should have put Google, and, and the other should have put Yahoo. Yeah, yeah, I think there are differences. But uh, well, my colleagues are German and uh, Dutch, and they thought that was uh, perhaps ethically. <laughs> and I said, I'm British, I don't care. And they said, uh, and they said well, we don't. Uh, so maybe I'll kind of ask the student to do that. I think that will, my suspicion is that if you put a Google logo on here, it will change the behavior. Yeah. The problem with this is the what, what, what's happened to Google. It's terrible. Mm. <laughs> so there, there is also uh, maybe related to that third point. There's uh, also a question of uh, what is most effective? Is it showing them good queries, or is it telling them how to build good queries? Like you remember at the beginning, you had. Uh, that uh, you, you coded uh, the motivation for the quiz being good, you coded that you came up with uh, six categories of the yeah. right? So, you know, it give it, does it give better result to show good queries to the user and let them figure out what the patterns are? Or is it or give better results to teach the users that, you know, if you put very specific queries, then the queries are better. If you put very yeah, whatever. Be Longer queries, longer terms than that were. That would be interesting. Yeah. I mean, what we thought of with this is because you can automatically generate these optimal queries to some extent. People mentioned, oh, you can only do this because you have a trend of Yeah. But on the yeah. web, you could also use Flex and do the same thing. Yeah. So the nice thing of this is you can automate, you can totally automate flash and generate good results for that search engine and we think extrapolate from those. Whereas if you have to build rules yourself, then that may not, might not apply to all such engines. So you'd have to do that a bit more mm -hmm. yeah. I know. Yeah. yeah, I wonder if people would object to that or not. You basically say, okay, this is how you just Oh, you know, it's what, it's what Ellie does, right? Yeah. She, she, in the information of the university, she teaches them how to search. And she doesn't do it by showing them queries that have been affected from the topic. She tells them the strategy. Since I saw the application of search and um, during the last one hour, um, that was very exciting. I was so excited because this is a very good example. Your, your research is very interesting. This was a very good example of um, a phenomenon that we study for a theory called graduation theory, in which it explains. Um, how we can how people learn when they see um, a phenomenon in different ways, right? So by seeing a um, query, right, um, they 
they can see the difference. You are showing them the difference. And this is beautifully explained through navigation. So I was so excited and I am so Yeah, no, because I think it would be nice. So you're saying with us? Uh, you say for a couple of hours. Yeah. Just lunch? Yeah, lunch. Yeah. After we yeah. 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 So basically, that's what I have to go at three o'clock because she's giving a talk in the bathroom. If I don't see it, I'll yeah. never see you again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she'll give you a good career. One thing you don't want. Four characters in my head. Four four four. Discounting <laughs> punctuation. <laughs> Uh, I was at, I was sort of at the conference last night. I had an experience uh, evening to, to the demo, and so I did not. It's interesting. It's very eclectic. When were you at the cube? I was at the cube. Ah, so you've seen it. Very nice. It's very, very cool. Yeah. Actually, they were showing this demo. It was very nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, yeah, hey, well, I have a question from Anton. Can we go to? Yeah, I'll put one up. Yeah, do you mind? So Anton says, uh, it costs in time and cognitive load more to build that better fields, right? Because you need to think more about it. Is the difference gained in IT by the two groups discernible by the user? And that's connect to Peter's favorite paper, one of the top favorite paper in um, That is, uh, can a person determine the difference between AP of 2.2 uh, or AP of 0.3 when it comes to using the IR system? So the performance difference was pretty profound, actually. So mm. my suspicion, I think that would be nice to check that out. My suspicion is probably yes, because in terms of the control group, a lot of topics that are really struggling to get any kind of results at all, actually. Yeah. Um, so, 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 so you selected that, that common, common queries people would issue a very poor performance, and instead the, the suggested query have really great performance. There is a large difference. That, that you assume, and you're using PIA 20, not an AP of 1,000. And so you're, you're saying it's likely that they somehow notice this very large gap. Yeah, I mean, we, this is why we chose that dimension, because this basically is the first page results, and that's all we chose. That's why we're and, and because And because you highlight the relevant documents, huh, and you give them scores and so on, again, they can realize yeah. that there is a gain. It's unlike uh, uh, Turbine. And, uh, they, well, you know, there's not that a lot, so it might be that it's because they don't realize the thing is relevant, therefore they don't realize the difference. Yeah. And actually, two of Dave's students even was a bit back a little bit, and he said, well, actually, we would play this game if you did it else to. Yeah. Which is a surprise me, because I'm sure it's not. Okay, Peter? Uh, yeah, he said, so when you so have these alternatives, You've got to choose, you've got to process them, you've got to choose them. Did you think the sense that the, that was an easy task to do? Because you, you're evaluating different alternatives. We all know they're good, but you still have to process them somehow and make a decision. So you mean to look at these good queries? Yeah, yeah, yeah. whether well, 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 there are alternatives that were in the mind or in the Yeah. So, so how much in, in terms of a decision making point, it was so difficult. You have a sense of difficult. That's interesting. I mean, this is one downside, I suppose, with doing crowdsourcing is that you don't get to absorb I suppose if you did, I don't remember Dave saying anything about students and low yeah. quality. Again, given that the people who are given high quality would actually spend longer, that might speak against that. But then my intuition would be that yes, if you're given more confounding 
queries to look at, but it should take you longer to process them. Yeah. I don't know if that's your intuition. Yeah, yeah, that's just a, what I'm thinking of. I said you were if I was doing this, and you're looking up, and you have to try and extract like, well, this is, should I use this one, or should I use this one? And from a decision making point of view, if, you, if, you, if you're clear about the criteria that's going to get you to where you need to go, then the, the, the cognitive load of the decision making process is in place. But this sort of thing, you're almost having to, I think it's a lot harder. Like I said, it's hard to evaluate the different establish this, this particular one is going to be better than another one. I mean, that's a fair problem. I don't think, obviously, there was variation between these queries. There weren't all those people who did. Yeah. Right? And I see, well, so the question is really whether the people try to evaluate which of well, these ones that I've just been told are good, which is the best of these. Yeah, well, um, I just wanted to get a little bit of 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 so, so you are saying there is uh, there might be a learning bias. Huh? You are learning the patterns you want to learn from those you show me, because you you guess they are better. No, not even saying that. I'm, I'm, okay. just, I'm just curious about what, you know, you're, you're having to make a decision between the alternatives. I'm, I'm wondering how they're doing, how they're transacting the decision making process. What, what criteria are they using? I mean, there was some evidence that people were systematically going to the options and trying them all out. So there were some people that did that. There were some people spending a long time in this, so quite a big periods of time, which is not surprising. So I think some people were systematically going through all of the options. Maybe that's personality. Yeah, it's a bit personality. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, uh, You can always say that with user studies. You know? That's a great way to end the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> it's just personality. Actually, it would be very interesting to, you know, uh, somehow replay the game, uh, make a make a game, a game like this, but where they cannot enter critics, uh, they only can choose among the pretty suggestion you give, right? You and, see well yeah, and you see how, how good they, they are in choosing the better critics over the other. So right? based on the evidence from literature again, what we must work, they won't do the other. It would be interesting to see. It would yeah. be a different way of doing that to say, yeah. getting that same result. I suspect it would be a good thing. Yeah. It, it, it's, it seems that you've also got a little bit of a, um, a contradiction between what people said they would do in the survey up front when you showed them the queries and what they actually did in the experiment. Yeah. Um, you know, for example, you had the one question saying, how would you use these? Mm -hmm. Suggestions and a large portion of people said no, I wouldn't. Yet in the experiment, you've got people using your suggestions, but, right? Yeah. Were, sorry. But the the one in the survey, the initial survey, didn't know whether they were any good or bad. Instead, the one in the actual experiment went to the training phase, could experience this suggestion that they, they said I've never used this. They actually saw that they deliver something, so maybe they learn from that. Yeah, so uh, yeah, the settings are there. The, there are different settings, but it, it is interesting to know whether those when you when you're people can you recognise a good query? Um, and we've we've got all this evidence saying people can't recognise good queries. The setting in which that they are asked makes a big difference. For mm -hmm. example, if they posed some of their own queries and viewed some documents. And then given a suggestion that says, is this a good query or not? How effective are they at that point as opposed to, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm not knowing about the collection of really. Yeah. 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 And the topic. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that that makes the, me the, the context in which that's set yeah. may make yeah. a very big difference. Yeah. yeah. I think it says a lot in human psychology. So yeah. It's a bit terrifying. You just, let's be clear, trusting people are. People obviously trust scientists, so it's like, so that's. <laughs> Because I could have just been horrible. That would be interesting, actually, if you did the same experiment instead of getting the good queries gave them rubbish ones and said, these are good queries, and then see if they um, get worse at queries. Yeah. 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 That would be interesting to hear about as well. And, and was there, so I mean, you had the box plots which showed sort of the variation, but were there, were there stand out? So that variation was across all queries. 
and the users also. Yeah, for the yeah, for the testing. For that group. But for with the individual users which were significantly better than others. Yeah. Irritatingly there were two in the control group which you really didn't want. They got nice they got even they got even nicer statistics if it wasn't Yeah. So yeah, you do you do get standard users who Yeah. They were usually the ones that spent the most time to watch them which were interesting. Yeah, or they have something else to do. Or they have something else to do. At the same time. Or information retrieval. Is that what do I do? And we're saying. We're the ones that still is misplaced systematically. Yeah, I'm interested in the strategy for those good users. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't remember that without the check, but possibly are the ones that systematically. There are definitely people who spent a huge amount of time on this, and they were usually the ones who did well, ultimately. But then we didn't put, I mean, our interesting question is we didn't put a limit on the number of the crews that could enter. So I guess some people just spend a lot of time and put like 50 crews with baskets, was eventually to get something to run, which was tough to piece. Uh, you might come across one which will be by random chance. Uh, so maybe it'd be interesting to be able to put a time limit or a crew on it. But I think the, the, there were definitely people who performed very well. Yeah. And I mean, again, there were some people who really could. Very hard. But they were pretty easy to mix through the groups. Mm. They were always going to be done. Mm. Okay, I think we can come to lunch. Yeah, come to the end of the lunch. Yep. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we, we go, uh, as usual, to the burger place to have lunch. If you like, just join us. Thank you.